In today's video, let's check out a web scraper that's powered by artificial intelligence that's gonna allow us to collect data. And then we're gonna take that data, put it into an LLM, and get valuable information for our business. So we're gonna be using a web data scraper like Bright Data. We're going to scrape a Amazon category for the reviews. We're gonna then take that data that is relevant for our business, load it into an LLM like OpenAI's assistance, start communicating with it, get valuable information, and everything above the board. Let's jump into today's video. Welcome back, y'all. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Data, but I think they're super cool as I actually just got off a call with a law firm that was asking for a specific pain point like this. Now, what they wanted was the ability to scrape public domain government sites for information in regards to contracts, but Bright Data could be past that. It can be used in a lot of different contexts. Now, one context we're probably all familiar with is how online e-commerce vendors get the lowest prices on all their products. The way they'll do this is they'll, they'll scrape the data from all their competitors, create these data sets, compare them, and then provide the lowest prices to their customers. Now, your next question probably is, Corbin, how the heck do I leverage this in my business? I believe the best way to leverage this in your business would be getting relevant data for your niche that you can proctor using an AI language model like ChatGPT and Assistance API find relevant answers that can help you out in a big, big amount of data. So we're gonna do that today. My plan is to show you how to connect the data we're gonna scrape into an assistance API, communicate with it, and get value. Let's go ahead and jump into today's video. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to Bright Data in the description down below. If you use that link, you get $10 worth of free credit to start using Bright Data products. Let's go ahead and begin the signup process. And it is free to start. So let's go ahead and start a free trial. We're just gonna simply click start free trial. With our free trial here, all you have to do is provide your information or you can continue with Google or GitHub and proceed. Now, before we jump any further here, know two major things about this platform. First one, you can only scrape data that is publicly available. So anything behind a login screen, we won't be able to get access to. And the second thing is this platform is free to use right off the bat. So you can get comfortable with it and see if this platform actually provides enough value for you to pay for it. Knowing all this, Let's go ahead and do today's example. So in today's example, I'm gonna take the place as an Amazon seller and trying to find a hot new product to sell. In order to do so, we're gonna come over to the web data section and you can already see there is a lot of data sets that we can choose from. I go to data set marketplace and you can go through all of this, right? But in this video, we're gonna go over specifically Amazon and checking out the data sets relevant to this. Scrolling through here, we can see there is a ton of data though across the board. And what this data can be used for now is grabbing a data set like this, like I'm about to show you, downloading it and exploring it with artificial intelligence rather than a bunch of command Fs, a bunch of reasoning that you would have to do in the old ways. So in this video, let's go ahead and jump over to Amazon products. Once we're in Amazon products here, we have a couple of different records relevant to Amazon. So we have best sellers, top rating products. We'll go ahead and choose Amazon's best sellers here. Once you found a data set that you like and you wanna test with, you can follow along on this video here. We're gonna go ahead and make sure we choose the option of JSON. Why are we choosing JSON, Corbin? That's because of the fact that this allows us to put it into an LLM with our assistant and actively communicate with it so it can actually read the data. So we're gonna go ahead and hit download sample as a JSON. I went ahead and downloaded it as a CSV as well, just to show you how much data we're dealing with here. Before the ability to load it into a chatbot like assistance, we would have to go ahead and cipher through this and come to our own conclusions, which could be very excessive as this is a ton of data to try to read and understand. Coming over to the OpenAI dashboard, we're gonna be able to start talking to this data with no code, which is super cool. So let's go ahead and name our assistant here. We're gonna say Amazon Researcher. Once we name it, we're gonna go ahead and come down here. We'll use the new model, ChatGPT 4.0, for the best, most comprehensive answers here. We're gonna make sure we turn on file search and then attach our JSON file. So we hit plus files here. Next, we'll hit click to upload. Currently uploading the products here. Now, if you chose a CSV file and try to upload it, it's going to say like not supported file type. So keep that in mind. JSON is basically the language that the AI will read it in. And we're gonna go ahead and hit attach here. So now that we've attached it, we're gonna see it right here. We can also find it within our storage. So here we go. This is other stuff I've stored throughout this dashboard here, but this is where you'll find the file itself. We're gonna come back to our assistant. You'll see it is indexing still. So it's loading the data in so it's readable. And let's go ahead and create our instructions here. Now the instructions are probably the most important part to get the most effective answers here. And let's go ahead and begin. Let's start off by giving some context here. So we're gonna say context. We are reading a data set 
of Amazon bestseller. So in your specific use case, what is the data set you're reading? That's the first thing we're going to set up here with the assistant so it understands contextually what the data is. Then we're going to ask it what to do with the data, why we care, and how to operate. Context, we are reading a data set of Amazon's bestsellers. We are trying to find patterns on what the best type of product is when it comes to, I'm gonna do semicolon here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and list off relevant columns that I care about that I think would be important for the data set to return. Use your discretion here. What's important in the data that you wanna point out to the AI model? Obviously it will look through everything, but this is what we're gonna point out together. I'm gonna do final price, gonna do categories, gonna do department and top reviews. So we'll do final price. Notice how I'm spelling it, how it shows up in the data. This is important. So it is very crystal clear to the AI what's going on here. We can also just Command C, Command V, Control C, Control V. Come back over here, Command V, paste, and let's go ahead and do a little bit more here. So I'm gonna expand this instructions as we can get pretty crazy here. So far we have context. We are reading a data set of Amazon's best sellers. What are we reading? Then we're identifying specific columns within the data set that we have deemed important for our questioning. So for us, we're doing final prices, categories, manufacture, and top review. Furthermore, based on all the data, answer relevant questions I may have as a Amazon seller ready to list a new product. The period here, go back and let's go and proceed here. Let's go and test this out. We may need to change some settings in order for it to be better. When handling temperature and top P, I would only edit the temperature part. You might be asking Corbin, what is temperature? What is top P? That is how random the answer is when it comes to consistency. Basically, they did a ton of tests and they found that a lower temperature gives you more consistent answers at scale, less creative, and a higher temperature gives us way more creative answers. So if your answers are kind of getting a little crazy there, I would go ahead and lower the temperature. So I'm gonna do a 0.7 temperature here, and we'll say create. Now that it's been created, we're gonna go ahead and hit playground. And here's what's amazing about OpenAI's dashboard and connecting it with bright data, is our ability to actually just start using it and conversating with the data that we have. I think the most important question to first ask your assistant is to see if it even sees the data correctly. So let's go and ask a question. I'm gonna say, what file do you have access to? This is just to ensure that like, it's actually looking at the correct data here. It should say something along the lines of Amazon, maybe give us more information. It's important that you say running retrieval that does show us that it is basically retrieving the data that we've attached earlier in this video. And from our directions here, you can see it's already taking the initiative to proceed. So we're gonna say Amazon researcher, based on the data set of Amazon's bestsellers, here are some patterns and insights on the type of products concerning final price, categories, manufacturers, and top reviews. And it's already going here. So it's taking all that information that we have here and it's just printing it out. And here we go. What is really cool as well, as you'll notice, is that if you have multiple data sources that you connect to the assistance API, it will tell you where it referenced that piece of data. So. Right now, we only got one data source. So of course, every single one where it references it is going to be from the same data source. But in theory, if you had multiple data sources, you would become aware of where it's grabbing that specific data, what specific file you uploaded. If you have multiple JSON files that you were downloading from Bright Data, now you'd be able to identify specifically where that point came from. So I'm gonna let this keep generating here. It is genuinely going through a ton of data. So this may take a couple seconds for it to work. While this keeps generating, let's go over the output that it's given us based off what we provided. First thing we asked for it to do was to find patterns for final price. Here's the patterns it found. It said electronics products like USB network adapters and external hard drive docking stations range from $699 to $2899, indicating affordability and high demand for practical tech accessories. Health and safety COVID-19 tests are priced at $1588, reflecting the essential nature of high turnover for medical supplies. And arts and crafts and sewing heat transfer vinyl records are priced around $899, showing the craft supplies maintain a moderate price point while being popular DIY enthusiast. After we've internalized and read all this data, we're going to go ahead and see what the next best product to sell based off of it is. So let's go to jump over to categories. Based off the data as well as identified electronics, arts, crafts, and sewing, and health and safety to be very popular. It seems like the product we're gonna to create together is probably gonna be around electronics as sometimes you can make really small pieces of hardware that sell well. As requested, it's identified the three major manufacturers for top selling products, which is iDuster, SSK, HTVR Runt. And finally, something that could be very relevant for us when creating our listing has to do with positive feedback on utility. 
products like the iDuster Compressed Air Duster received high praise for their effectiveness in cleaning electronics, which is a crucial factor of potential buyers. Let's actually gut check that. Let's see if that piece of data is actually true. So what we're going to do is Command C this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come over to a CSV. I'm going to Command F, Command V. All right, so we found our product that we were referencing here. Let's see if the review is aligned with that. So I'm going to scroll all the way over here. And it looks like it. it says works as advertised, which is probably one of the best type of reviews to get as it shows that the advertisement itself is true to the product itself. Nice airflow. Like all the other pressurized air canisters, it does get very cold and touched when used. But the big thing here is it does show that it works as advertised, which is a big thing for a lot of consumers in this context. Scrolling down here, we have our final piece here. So recommendations for a new Amazon product listing, category selection. It goes over the three major categories like earlier, pricing strategy, goes over to $6.99 to $28.99. Manufacturing credentials, I kind of just wanted to see how we would identify that. And it probably just did a quantification of basically, this is how many listings are from this manufacturer and so on. And then highlighting top reviews, showcase customer reviews that emphasize ease of use, effectiveness, durability to attract more buyers. Let's push this a little bit further here. We're gonna say, okay, great. Can we make a product for the electronic category based on the data? What would be the best product? Give a name, five key points. I know with Amazon listings, there's like those little five bullet points, five key points, description, pricing, and more. So we have done our research. Based off the research, we understand that one of the top categories is electronics. So we're gonna be expecting a electronic product. We're also gonna be expecting the price for it to say is, six, is somewhere between $6.99 and $28.99. If it doesn't, that means it's not probably following the data. So we'll prove that right now. And lastly, we're going to get some extra copywriting because what's super cool is based off our entire data sheet here, we have a ton of copywriting and we already know these are top performing products. Therefore, the copywriting we see for the descriptions is obviously good enough to get enough conversions. So to be a little bit more clear there, I'm going to say five key points and descriptions and pricing and more all based on the relevant data. Let's hit run. There we go, it came out pretty fast here. So the product proposal is Smart Clean Pro Compressed Air Duster and Vacuum 2-in-1. It gives us the key points, dual functionality, eco-friendly, high performance, portable and lightweight, multiple attachments, that's always good. An entire description, pricing, between the pricing that we had, under $28.99, the categories, the manufacturer, the top review highlights, the features, and so on. Let's go ahead and personalize this a little bit more. We're gonna say our brand is Dust Holes gone. Add that to the relevant copy. Now, if I was actually going to proceed and do this, I would go through the process of finding a manufacturer, maybe through Alibaba, and kind of use the copywriting that we just based off of this data. So that's leveraging bright data in the context of creating a new listing off of best sellers, but this can be leveraged way past that. So whether your business is a very specific market or niche that you want data on and ask questions for, to make the product selection slash services you offer to be better. There's also a bunch of other stuff that you may not even be aware of, such as LinkedIn people's profiles. That's interesting. You can compile a bunch of people and get information on individuals. One that might be interesting to a software company is that we can get Yelp business reviews, which is super cool. Furthermore, if you're looking through the entire marketplace of all the data that they have available for sale, you don't like any of it. What you can do is actually request certain data sources to be scraped. You get custom data sets that may be relevant to your business. Now, I just got off a call this morning for a law firm, and I can tell you right off the bat that a custom data set that they would probably request is going to be off of government websites and relevant information when it comes to case law that can be found on the internet. Lastly, if this sounds cool and you want to learn more, you can go ahead and jump into a call with your account manager and they'll fill you in with everything bright data can do for you in this day and age we already have heard a ton of stuff in the media when it comes to good data creates good llms so use bright data if you want to get some good data that you can start training your llms or your different artificial intelligence use cases as now we know that the best types of answers are trained on the best type of data i'll see you in the next video this playlist right here goes over different productivity tools you can start adding to your business right away that's a random video based off your clicks on YouTube. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.